Hello, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm gonna sharpen this. It's Friday the 13th. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. She's back at it again. But what's she doing today? She's not on the living room floor. What is this cutting board for? Those are some good questions, okay? A couple months ago, I was on Etsy. Loves me some Etsy. Best place to get ferret stuff, in my professional opinion. And I came across these treats. And they were dehydrated chicken gizzards and chicken hearts. And they were marketed as dental treats. So I did a little bit of, a little bit of research, a little bit of Google, if you will. And I found out that they're totally safe for ferrets to eat, which makes sense because it's just meat, which they eat. So I bought some. And lo and behold, my ferrets loved them, okay? They were crazy for them. But the problem is, I spent $20, Canadian dollars, on uh, this little tiny, little tiny bag here. And that's just, that's just not enough. You know, these were great. Definitely 11 out of 10 recommend. I don't know if you can see the logo. $20 for a little tiny bag, even if they're good, it just doesn't seem right to me. I went to the store and I can buy a full thing here, chicken hearts for $2 and 24 cents. And I can also buy a full bag of chicken gizzards for around the same price. Full disclosure, I forget how much I paid for those. So in my little rack em up brain over here, I thought to myself, I have the hearts and the gizzards. I just have to take all the moisture out of them. And so I bought this. I purchased a meat dehydrator. It is a, a Salton Vita Pro food dehydrator. Okay? You know, 55 bucks. Not a bad deal. Definitely only bought this brand because it was the cheapest one. And as we've covered, I don't have a lot of money. Now there is only one final step until we have beautiful fairy treat goodness, and that's to follow quite a few steps to turn these into what was previously in this bag. So if that sounds like a fun time for you, boy are we ready to go. Now, before we get too crazy all up in this business, I would like to point out a couple things about these treats. So take out your little notepad or scroll down and I'll probably have it written down in the description, whatever boats your float, but please listen closely to the words I'm about to speak. You might look at these treats and think about what I am telling you and think to yourself, I can just go to the store and buy dog jerky treats. No, you cannot. Ferrets can't eat those kind of treats, especially human grade beef jerky, because they're normally got a lot of salt and a lot of flavoring and a lot of preservatives that are super bad for ferrets. So please, please do not buy your ferrets dog treats and even more importantly, do not feed them human jerky. Bad idea. And by human jerky, I don't mean like human meat jerky. I mean like jerky made for people to eat. Just wanna clarify. On that train of thought, it is my professional personal opinion and the professional personal opinion of many others that most, if not all, you know what? I'm gonna say all. All treats branded to ferrets are actually not very good for them. Lots of the treats that you can buy in store for ferrets include ingredients that they shouldn't be eating like wheat flour and cane molasses, which I don't know if you've heard, but ferrets are obligate carnivores. So feeding them molasses it's just not a good idea. Along with this, one of the most popular brands for ferret treats, I will not name drop, but you can put it together, are raisin flavored. Um, hold up there. Raisin, as in grape, as in something that's toxic to ferrets and dogs and lots of other pets. Now, I am not a genius. I never claimed to be a genius but I can use my big girl brain on that one. Don't seem like a good idea. If you are going to buy treats for your ferrets and you don't wanna make them for yourself, understandable. The brand that I really recommend is Origin. These are the kind of treats that I feed my ferrets. We get the Origin freeze-dried treats. What's important is just to look at the ingredients and make sure that it's a one ingredient treat. Like this one's a duck one. So it only has duck in it. There's nothing else added to it because it's that added stuff that's bad for them. I will link below a couple other good brands of treats because I know there are a few out there. 
Just make sure you're aware of what you're feeding your ferret and what is and isn't good for them. As far as the treats that we're about to make today goes, I was mostly doing research on hearts and gizzards because that's sort of what I was finding most of the information on. But I know that you can also make this treat with pretty much any other kind of meat. However, I would stay away from liver just because too much liver gives your ferret way too much vitamin A, which can result in the vitamin A toxicity, which is something that you really don't want, especially if your ferret is already eating something that's high in vitamin A. So stay away from liver, but any other sort of part of the animal should be okay, so long as there's no bone in it, because if you cook bone, especially chicken bone, it becomes brittle, and then when they chew that, it gets stuck in their throat or in their stomach, and then you gotta go to surgery. And we don't want surgery for your ferrets, we want treats for your ferrets. For the purpose of today, we are gonna be using heart and gizzard because they are just the easiest to get hold of, and in fact, you can buy them normally in grocery stores in a little fancy container together, so just the easiest. I would recommend doing it with these. Another important note, these dehydrated treats are not meant to be a meal substitute. These are treats. I'm only gonna be giving my ferrets one or two a week, so if you're making these and giving them in huge quantities to your ferrets, uh, maybe uh, hold off for a second, give them their regular food, and then say, "Oh, good, good boy, uh, Spot, you pooped in the litter box. Have a heart." Doesn't that sound better to you? Another important note about these is that I'm going to be refrigerating them. Um, sources that I've looked at online said sort of different things, which is why I think refrigerating them is the best idea. Some places said that they can be on the shelf for a month. Some said three months. But normally the ones that were saying three months said that after that they need to be refrigerated. It doesn't seem like refrigerating them is going to do any harm, so I may as well just keep them in the refrigerator anyway. That's at least my logic. Now, you might be asking yourself, Kenya, where is the consistency in this shot? You clearly filmed this after doing some other stuff. Yes, I forgot to mention this part. You might also be asking yourself, but Kenya, you just introduced us to these freeze-dried origin treats. Those sound great. Why do I need to make my ferrets these extra jerky treats with a dehydrator? I don't have time for that. And to that I'll say, that's okay, you don't have to make these. I'm just doing it because it seems fun. And also, uh, dental hygiene. So as I mentioned in my other videos, my ferrets are currently on the raw diet. The best version of the raw diet that you can feed your ferrets is a whole prey diet, which is your ferret just eating an entire rabbit or an entire bird. Obviously it's more complicated than that. Please don't just throw your ferret a rabbit and be like, there's your dinner. The second best version of raw you can do is Franken Prey, which is basically you making your own sort of homebrew diet where you throw together a bunch of different parts of animal meats with an even ratio of bone in to organ to muscle meat. I'll put some links below for more information on that. The next version of raw you can do that isn't as good as the two above is with a grind. So that's why I feed my ferrets. We feed ours commercial grinds. And what the grind is, is it's the whole animal put into a meat grinder and there's someone going like this and spinning the meat grinder um, and it grinds the animal. It's exactly like that, trust me, I was there. When ferrets are eating grinds, they still get the same benefits that whole prey and franken prey gives them where it's a balanced meal, but they aren't eating bone, so it's not as good for their teeth. So to still give them the benefit of having clean teeth, you'll need to either be feeding them franken prey, partly, or be brushing their teeth often. For us, we brush our ferrets' teeth, and I've tried to introduce them to Franken-Prey. I have a bunch of frozen chicken feet in my fridge that I'm trying to get them to eat, but they just aren't taking to it as quickly as I'd like them to. I thought that this was a good alternative for them to be eating while they're still trying to adjust to the bone in meals. So by giving them these jerky treats, it still gives them something to chew on, which is gonna get all the plaque off of their teeth, and it's gonna be something that is healthy for them at the same time. If you feed your ferrets kibble, I really recommend giving them something like this to chew on because kibble, although many people think that it's better for their teeth, the second that the ferret bites into kibble, it turns into dust in their mouth, which turns into a pasty powder, which sticks to their teeth and makes their dental health significantly worse than a raw fed ferret. So in conclusion, we're doing this because it's good for their little teetsies. Back to the version of me that was doing things at the right time. So um, yeah, so the first step for us to do is to take all of our meat and rinse it. Just, that's what they tell you to do. So I'm gonna be doing that real quick. Okay, so I took these out of my freezer like a while ago. Um, and by a while ago, I mean like 36 hours ago. And they're still frozen, what's with that? So life sucks, I guess. 
If you want, you can wear gloves. I'm not gonna wear gloves. I'm just gonna wash my hands, as you do. You know, I normally wear gloves when I portion my ferrets meat. I just feel like I'm doing too much tedious stuff with this that I may as well not. Okay, I'm gonna rinse these in like not hot water. Oh no, I lost a heart. It's okay. Now, um, I wanna point out also, make sure that when you're doing this, that you clean very thoroughly all the surfaces that all of this has been on afterwards. Just like if you're cooking raw meat for yourself, you don't want this just hanging out. It's a bad idea. Okay. So the bigger the chunks of meat are, the longer they're gonna take to dehydrate. So these are what the little hearts look like. Um, and so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna cut off this white part here, like the fatty part. Uh, fat just reacts weird in the dehydrator and it makes it really oily and you just don't really need that. So we're just gonna cut off all of the fat that's on the little hearts. No one come over here. I'm gonna wash this. It's good, it's good. I just can't step slightly to my right, to my left, same thing. It's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. And is that it? Um, okay, so I have all of the hearts. So now what we're gonna deal with the gizzards. Do I know what part of a chicken a gizzard is? No. Do I know it's part of a chicken? Yes. So the thicker these are, the longer they're gonna take to dehydrate. So I think that the bigger ones, I'm just gonna sort of cut in half. Like this is too big anyway. Oh my God, this is hard to cut. Yeah, so I'm gonna get little pieces like this size ish because these are going to shrink quite a lot and i think that those will be the same sort of size as the other ones were so like this one is fine i don't need to cut that this one's fine this is fine this one i'm going to cut i'm actually not going to throw these into the dehydrator right away right now it's 4 45 in the evening Everywhere I looked sort of told me different times for how long this is going to take and I feel like it sort of just depends on your dehydrator. I bought a kind of cheapo one so I feel like it's going to take a little bit longer. The lowest time that I saw on the websites I was looking that it would take is 11 hours and some of them said as much as 26 hours which is kind of a big difference in time there. I'm going to go wash my hands, they feel gross. Coronavirus, stop the spread. Oh, I can clean this up now. Wow, my floor is dirty. And it's not just moving the chicken guts. Okay. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So because of such a big difference in time, uh, I'm kind of trying to form my life around these going into the dehydrator. I think that the best plan of action is for me to put them in right before I go to bed tonight, leave this on overnight. So they'll be in for about seven to eight hours by the time that I get up. I did check on the Google if that was safe to do because these are at such a low temperature and so long as you put them away from other things, I'm gonna plot mine right in the middle of the counter here. It's not a fire hazard. I mean like it's a fire hazard the same way that your fridge is a fire hazard. You know, and personally, I'm willing to take that risk. So I'm gonna pop these in right before I go to bed. When I wake up in the morning, I'll set, check on them. I don't expect them to be done when I wake up in the morning. In, I think that they're gonna take closer to 20 to 24 hours, but then that means that by tomorrow night, they should be done and we can do a little taste test. And by we, I do not mean myself. Although, could I eat? Not now, obviously, but once they're cooked, should I taste test them? I will touch base with you guys later once I have put them in my dehydrator slash once I am putting them in my dehydrator at 11 o'clock tonight. Goodbye, friends. Look, I'm cleaning the counter. To anyone who thinks that raw is unsanitary, I ask you, you ever cleaned before? Well, why is the 
We're so nerdy, all the time. <gasps> I just thought of a funny joke. Okay. 99 ferrets walk into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve your kind here. To which the ferrets say, fine, we'll take our business elsewhere. 99 ferrets walk into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve your kind here. The ferrets say, fine, well, you're duking yourself a disservice. At about 11.45 that night, I put the meat into the dehydrator. A few sources I saw online said that the lower racks were hotter, and I thought that that did make sense, so I tried to put the gizzards at the bottom since they are a little bit thicker than the hearts. Oh, um, uh, oops, just, just ignore that. Nothing to see here. Once I had them all lined up and ready, I turned on the dehydrator to 70 degrees Celsius. That's 160 Fahrenheit for you American folks. And I went to bed. Good night. When I woke up the next morning at about 10 o'clock, I'm allowed to sleep in, it's a Saturday, don't judge me. I thought that they still looked like they weren't really ready yet. As you can see, the hearts look a little bit squishy, which is a sign that they do need a little bit more time. I also checked the ones on the bottom rack just to make sure. And like I thought, they were still a little squishy like the hearts. So because of that, I just turned the dehydrator back on and I left it for another couple hours. My friends, it is five o'clock the day after I put these into the dehydrator. So that means that they were in for seventeen and a half hours, I think. Yes. So these bad boys were in the dehydrator for seventeen and a half hours, and they look pretty good to me. Um, honestly, I think that I could have put them in for a little bit less, but I was kind of thinking I should put them in for a bit extra rather than a bit too little. So maybe next time I won't put them in as long. So yeah, this is what the little hearts ended up looking up like. This is one of the gizzards. The next step is for me to dab them down with a little bit of paper towel, get some of the oil off, and then I'm gonna throw them into this handy dandy storage jar. And they are done. Now we have this like pretty decently full jar of treats that we have made by ourselves, which are healthy for ferrets and good for their teeth. I don't know about you, but this is pretty exciting for me personally. I know yesterday when I was making these, I was kind of thinking, is it possible for me to eat them? I'm honestly still not super sure. So if any of you have information on whether or not these are human safe, I would love it if you would let me know, possibly with a source, link that below in the comments, because who knows, maybe I will eat these in a future video or possibly use them in a different video in which I maybe give my boyfriend a quiz on ferret care and make him eat a treat for every answer he gets wrong. Who knows? For now, I wanna see how my ferrets react to them and if they enjoy them. So this is the standard call I do to get my ferrets to come. Let's see if it works. Luna, Luna, do you want a treat? Huh? Okay. All right, so this is one of the gizzards. Let's see how she feels about it. Do you want this? Hey, you, you want it? <gasps> oh, she took it. <laughs> she normally goes and eats her treats um, under the couch. Okay, girl, there she goes. Here's a heart. Let's see if Tulio will take a heart. Tulio. You want that? Oh, good boy. Well, 
all together, I think that this video was a huge success. I am super happy with the outcome and I'm really glad that I now know how to make treats for my ferrets. It was super exciting, super fun, and really not all that difficult. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love you too. You're welcome. She says thank you for treats. You're welcome. I love to spoil you. Me too. I just want what's best for you. I just want what's best for you. Thank you so much for everyone who watched. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment down below, it would really make me happy. I love to hear from you guys. I will hopefully be back here next weekend, though I'm not super sure, simply because, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but the new Animal Crossing game comes out on Saturday, and I kind of want to spend the entire weekend just binging that game. But... I will try and put out a video nonetheless. Thank you so much for spending your time watching my video today. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a wonderful week. And I may or may not be here next week, but if not, I will definitely be back the week after that. See you later.